Hey guys, what's going on? So I'm in the new shop today. Um, as you can see, it's already got a few projects in it. Stuff sitting around. I actually did a little work on the wagon the other day. Storing Nova for a friend, 55 Chevy right there. For, a, um, uh, for another shop. You guys may remember the uh, Mordor Chevelle or Crew Cab Chevelle from Roadkill. It belongs to uh, my friend Alex now. And uh, this is another customer's car. This is a 66 GTO convertible. Super nice paint, looks pretty cool. But um, sort of a budget build, but the, I think he, I mean, it doesn't look like there's much of a budget or like discount taken on the paint job. So um, we are just gonna wire and fire. So the motor and transmission were already installed. Um, I went ahead and scuffed the dash and just hit it with some trim black. He, a customer requested that just because those dash pads are so expensive. That's going to be down the road to put that in. And it, uh, um, or he could just actually throw one of those little mats up there and it'll look just fine. Um, took out all the harness because we're putting in a whole new harness. The fuse box was all rusted and corroded. Cleaned everything up, painted the steering column and stuff. Um, Randy hasn't done my 220 yet, so compressor sitting over there but I got no way to run it so DeWalt came through blew all the muck out of the dash under the dash and while you're under the dash I mean honestly when's the next time you're gonna be back here we got all new gauges all the OPGI repop stuff it's nice nice new lenses and everything this dash looks really good from the other side looks pretty good from both sides but it's a good looking dash um, while you're in here, uh, make a note. Just go ahead and change out all the all the uh, the bulbs, because yeah, you don't want to have to go through this again. It's a bear to get your hand up behind there. Also, any wiring, like look at this. This is the one that came out. So you can tell that all this was done with somebody laying on their back and just reaching under the dash and just irritated. There's melted wires in here, burn up wires, wires that are just cobbled together and twisted up. There's cardboard and duct tape. This duct tape isn't even duct tape anymore. I don't know what it is. Either way, now is the time to do it right. Make it clean, get familiarized with what's going on back here. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I saw that it had the illumination circuit for the radio, factory radio. Took that off the old harness, added it to this one. Had an additional illuminated, illumination little adapter right here for some other option. I don't know what it is. But either way, it's installed and installed correctly. The convertible switch is there. Harness will be laying here. I'm gonna zip tie all that together so I can access it and I'll know where it is. While this is apart, I'm going to use my power probe. I do have a nice tech bench over there with power supply and everything, but I'm over here right now. So power probe to the rescue. Let me get, where's Sticks McGann? I thought he was lounging over here. There he is. Sticks McGann. Lounging over on the cool side. Let me bring you down to my level. And um, so here's what I'm going to do. I got power from the GTO. And I'm going to put a ground circuit on the dashboard. This, this is a ground circuit. I'll turn it on so you can hear. Green light means ground. Red light means voltage. So I ground that there. So now you can confirm that it's a ground on every light, every housing, the switches, the windshield wipers. Oh, no ground on the windshield wipers. Put that this side. So that's something to look into. There should be a ground circuit. Oh, you know what? Ground circuit for windshield wiper switch comes through the harness, so that's all good. Either way, that's all happening. Now, if I grab any gray wire, like this one right here, and I put voltage into it, it should turn on all the dash lights. I'm gonna turn that off now. So let's put this thing over.
Yes, sir. I can look around inside there and see every circuit lighting up. But what I do see lighting up is the brake light. So, good for me. We're able to figure that out now. That's this one right here. That's the brake right on it. So there should be a different bulb somewhere that goes into that. Because this is illumination. This one goes. Either way, now is the time to discover all this stuff. Oh, you know what I see here? Is I see that I can pull this one out here, pop it over to there, pop this one right in here. Like I said, now's the time to discover all this stuff, not when you're, it's already installed in the car and you're hanging upside down under the dash. Or worse than that would be it being all together and giving it to the customer. And they call you back a couple days later, first time they drive it at night, displeased. So, this is for some optional option. Do a little research on that, don't need that. So now we can test it again. Gray circuit, yes. Now, brake light, where or where is the brake light? That's the floor dash. I can actually look at the stock harness. One thing about the power probe is you can actually use it, the light that's in it, flash it right through here and move it down to the other side. batteries in a charge light. out where the brake light indicator is. It just tells you when your e-brake is on. It should just be a little exciter wire and a plug. So, actually it has to be one of these. Oh, well, it's not in this place. Anyway, I'll do some snooping around. Either way, get ready to put this thing in. Fire that video back up. Got the carpet in, center console in, left some wires out right there because uh, this car didn't have a factory center console, even though we put the harness and stuff in it. Um, some of it, uh, provisions for an interior light, aftermarket shifters, just lots of variables going on there. I did hook up the interior lights. There'll be a, a kick lights back here when he puts the interior panels in. There was doing his upholstery. Um, there's the instrument panel all assembled. Um, other things I ended up doing to this just to, uh, so my, my formula for a wire and a fire is you should be able to get in it, fire it up, put it in gear, at least drive it to a trailer. Um, it has open exhaust, so it's really loud. But charging system's buttoned up. Cooling system fixed, power steering leak, 
throttle linkage is all hooked up correctly now. It has throttle return springs, a detent cable, and a uh, throttle cable that is pulling the correct geometry. Tail lights are all hooked up. Blinkers, indicators, all that stuff's done. Um, I painted the dash while it was out. Why not? Um, I think that's park. Battery light. Uh, blinkers. All four corners outside the car work. Uh, what gear am I in? Oh, there we go. Neutral safety works, apparently. Or does it? That's all buttoned up. Uh, when they get the top working, we will uh, send power to the pump. Um, other than that, I think we're pretty good. Front marker lights. We need to get headlights because it's got mis mix mismatched headlights in it. And uh, got a couple of T3s. But it's one high beam, one low beam T3. All bulbs are not the same. And they put the T3s in the top and the aftermarket's in the bottom. And you end up having two high beams on one side and a broken low beam and a regular low beam on the other side. So we need to just get a complete set of bulbs. Just spin the dough. Get the ones you want. Um, yeah, the uh, back's looking good. Tail lights, license plate light. All handled. Yeah, new harness in the trunk. Complete harness. Basically, every wire in it has been replaced. With the exception of the little stubby wire for the power top. But that's it. All done. Um, yeah, nothing else to do. Send this off to the customer's house. And on to the next one. Thanks for watching, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Smash that like button. That's what the kids are saying. And uh, watch for the next video. See ya.